Hello and welcome to this SimScale tutorial on Porous Media. In this video, you are going to learn the CAD requirements to run a simulation with Porous Media and also how to define the characteristics of your Porous Media in the SimScale workbench. In my project, I have a very simple geometry of a pipe containing a perforated plate. I will hide the solid walls volume so we can see the plate clearly. This plate contains a total of 57 holes and acts as an obstacle to the flow. From a physics point of view, we are going to observe a pressure drop in the flow as it goes through the obstacle. In SimScale, whenever we have a complex obstacle to the flow, such as perforated plates and filters, we have two main options to run the simulation. The first option is to use the actual geometry of the obstacle. With this approach, we usually generate large meshes, which require more resources to run. The second option is to use a porous media model instead of the complex obstacle. This way, we can account for the pressure losses caused by the obstacle without having to mesh all the detailed topology. Before talking about the setup of a simulation using a porous media model, let's check the usual CAD preparation steps. For this demonstration, I am going to use a CAD tool named Onshape. However, the steps can be reproduced in other CAD tools as well. The objective is to create a fully solid volume to represent the porous media. Here, tools like Sketch and operations like Extrude and Revolve are going to be very useful depending on your geometry. For our plate geometry, I can simply hide the solid walls. And now I can create a sketch on the front face of the obstacle. Now I am going to create a circle with the same diameter as the perforated plate. The next step is to extrude the circular profile along the length of the perforated plate. Note that in this operation, we are interested in creating a new volume. This new volume is going to be our porous zone, so as a best practice, we should also rename it accordingly. Now the perforated plate volume is no longer going to be necessary during the simulation setup, so we can simply delete it. This model is now ready to be imported back to SimScale. Now we have the new version of the geometry in the workbench. Before starting a simulation, we have two final steps in the geometry preparation phase. We must create a fluid region and also delete the solid parts of the geometry. These operations can be done in SimScale's CAD mode environment. To access CAD mode, you can click on the name of your geometry and then on the Edit in CAD Mode button. Within CAD Mode, an internal flow volume operation will allow us to create the fluid region. The first setting we have to provide is a seed phase. A seed phase can be any internal phase that is going to be in contact with the fluid region. Since our fluid region is going to be internal to the pipe, I can select this face as a seed face, for example. Then we have to provide the boundary faces of our domain. We have a total of three openings. Therefore, we are going to have a total of three boundary faces as well. The first one is going to be this one. And we do the same for the other two openings. Finally, under excluded parts, we are always going to exclude our porous zone volume from the operation. At this point, we can click apply to run the operation. After a few seconds, one additional volume is created representing the fluid region. 
for all analysis types besides conjugate heat transfer, we are not interested in the solid parts of the domain. Therefore, I will delete the solid walls with a delete body operation. This geometry is ready for a simulation with poros zones. By clicking on finish, you are going to export the new version of the geometry to your workbench. Back to the SimScale workbench, I have created an incompressible analysis using the geometry that I have just exported from the CAD mode environment. Furthermore, I have also defined a couple of very simple boundary conditions. The first one is a velocity inlet, which was defined to two openings. Through each one of these openings, we are going to have 100 liters per second of fluid going into the domain. I have also defined a pressure outlet where all of the flow is going to exit the domain. Now we have to define a material as well. In my case, I am interested in having water in my domain. So I am going to pick water from the list. In this step, it's very important to only assign the material to the flow region. We don't want to assign the material to the poro zone. By expanding advanced concepts, we can see the entry for porous media. By clicking on the plus button, you are going to be able to choose between the five porous media models that we have in SimScale. They are Darcy Forsheimer, Fixed Coefficients, Power Law, Pressure Loss Curve, and Perforated Plate. Each one of these models are explained in detail in the SimScale documentation pages. For demonstration purposes, I am going to show you the usual setup of the simulation with two models, perforated plate and also pressure loss curve. First, let's check the setup of the perforated plate model. The perforated plate porous media model is going to be optimal whenever you have a perforated plate and you don't have any experimental data about the expected pressure losses. The setup of this model is very simple, so let's go through the settings. The first one is the free area ratio. This value represents the ratio between the open area and the total area of the plate. For this reason, it will always be between 0 and 1. In my case, the free area ratio is 17.6%. The second setting is the hole shape, which can be general or circular. In our case, the holes are going to be circular. Now we also have to define the average hole diameter, which is going to be one centimeter for our plate. The last setting is the flow direction, which represents the orientation of the holes. We should always use the orientation cube in the bottom right corner of the workbench as a reference. In our case, the default setting of 1 in the x direction is already the correct one. You can also see there is going to be an arrow indicating the resulting flow direction based on your input. Finally, we can assign our porous media volume to finalize the setup. Now imagine that you already have the experimental data for the pressure drop across your obstacle. In such cases, using a pressure loss curve for its media model is going to be the best option. We need to define the following. The length of the porous media in the flow direction, in our case it's going to be 5 centimeters. The cross-section area of the porous media representing the total area of the cross-section. If you are unsure about this value, it's very easy to check it in your CAD model. For example, in our case, it's going to be this area. I can simply click and grab the area from the bottom right corner. I am going to copy and paste this value back to SimScale. 
For the permeability type, we have two options, isotropic or directional. Since we have a perforated plate, it will be directional in the positive x direction, again using the orientation cube as a reference. Next, by clicking on this button, we can define the experimental data for our geometry. At least three data points for volumetric flow rate versus pressure drop should be provided. The first point is always going to be zero and zero, because if we don't have any flow, we won't have any pressure drop. After defining all data points that you have, we can save by pressing apply. Finally, we can assign our porous media volume to finish the setup. Once the porous media configuration is finished, you are ready to set up a mesh. The standard meshing tool is the recommended algorithm to use in this case. Here are some pointers to be aware of. For each one of the porous media volumes, we should create a cell zone. When we have the physics-based meshing option enabled, this is going to be done automatically by the meshing algorithm. For this reason, I would recommend always keeping this option enabled. If you have it disabled in your mesh settings, there is going to be one additional entry in the simulation tree named cell zones. You can simply click on the plus button and assign it to the porous zone volume. So this is how a cell zone is created manually. However, as a good practice, we should maintain physics-based meshing option enabled, so I am going to turn this back on. There is one additional pointer to mention in terms of the meshing operation. For porous zones, it's very important to have a good enough discretization across the thickness of the porous zone. As a good practice, we should ensure at least five cells across the thickness. The best way to do that is by using a region refinement. As you can see, the thickness of our porous zone in the flow direction is five centimeters. So we can define a maximum edge length of one centimeter to ensure five cells across the thickness. We can simply select the porous zone volume to assign it to the region refinement. And that's all. The setup is finalized and we can set our simulation to run. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I will see you in SimScale. Thank you.